Hi everyone, in this topic I'll be talking about um, continuing on the topic of chemical bonds. In the previous topic, in topic 8, we talked about how the Lewis model can be used to represent bonding in various types of covalent molecules and we're able to use the Lewis theory of bonding to explain different things like reactivity um, and particularly the uh, strength of bonds, you know, single bonds is weaker than double bonds and so on. And we also talk about how the Lewis model can then be used to predict the three-dimensional structure of these simple molecules using the Vesper theory. And then we can also use the Lewis model to predict um, molecular polarity. Okay, so there's a lot of use to the Lewis model. And if you, know, go, if you go on to organic chemistry, you'll see that the Lewis model is used quite extensively there to illustrate reactions and how... Um, molecules uh, are involved in a, in a reaction, okay? We talk about the idea of resonance as well, and that's also something you'll see quite a bit in organic chemistry. Now, what I want to talk about now in Topic 9 is really to focus on the other aspect of chemical bonds, and that's something that the Lewis model really didn't um, talk about too much, which is the fact that, you know, atoms, uh, as we talked about in Topic 7, uh, is modeled using quantum theory and electrons are modeled as waves and the Lewis model really envisioned um, didn't really talk about that at all in fact the Lewis model if you think about it is kind of envisioning the electron more like a particle and you're just you know combining this this different structures uh, this different dots together to form a bond now it's it's very useful in terms of practice but it can't really explain the entire property of molecules and you know that's not surprising because it's really not based on quantum mechanics which is really the the, the you know fundamental uh, nature of how electrons and atoms actually behave so in this topic in topic 9 we're gonna spend some time talking about the two different models of chemical bonds that uh, actually incorporate quantum mechanics and the wave function you know this concept that you learn in the in topic 7 into the com the idea of chemical bonds so the two models that we're going to talk about, the first one is called the valence bond theory, listed right here, called VB theory. And one of the concepts that were discussed in the valence bond theory is also this concept of hybrid orbitals, hybrid atomic orbitals. And using this, we can um, combine this with the Lewis model to explain molecular structure, which is those three-dimensional structure that was predicted before by uh, Vesper theory. And then in the next, you know, uh, half of the of this topic, you will um, learn how to, you know, you will learn the concept of molecular orbital, which is yet yet another model to explain how atoms come together to form a molecule. And the molecular orbital theory or the MO theory allows you to explain certain properties of molecules that the valence bond theory cannot explain. For example, things like magnetic property uh, and also uh, things like why the structure, certain experimental structure, are resonance average. In other words, we're not, you know, remember that I mentioned before that resonance structures are not real, but the fact that, uh, you know, we need to draw resonance structure in a Lewis structure somehow indicates that, you know, it's sort of like a made up. Um, tool to to account for this experimental experimentally observed structure but the molecular orbital theory can actually predict the experimental structure without having to consider this resonance structure these unreal structures okay so one of the things that I want to get at at the beginning is that the fact that there's two of these theories um, historically the valence bond theory started first a little easier to understand uh, and it's very much connected to the Lewis model of bonding, so as a result, uh, this was historically the first one to to w to be proposed, and then the molecular orbital theory was proposed a little later after quantum mechanics had developed uh, further. Now, as far as you know, which ones to use, uh, both of them are used in terms of context. So a lot of times, you see that this valence bond theory is used because it's relatively easy to see how things work here. The molecular orbital, because it's re it, it, it's a full quantum mechanical model of the of bonding, it requires a lot more calculations. Uh, and as you saw in topic seven, a lot of this 
sometimes are so difficult to calculate that it's it's really not possible to make molecular orbital calculations or very complex molecules. So a lot of times the valence bond orbital uh, valence bond uh, theory is actually used to explain properties of molecules. And again, there are certain molecular um, properties like structure, for example, that uh, are a lot easier to explain if you were to use the valence bond theory. And there's other uh, properties like magnetic properties one where it makes a lot more sense to explain the these properties using the molecular orbital model so let's go into the uh, valence bond model first uh, and let's just talk about how the valence bond model envisions bonding okay in other words how, how does it model uh, a chemical bond so the valence bond model uh, views a bond a chemical bond as a result of overlap of valence orbitals of two atoms okay so what do I mean by overlap well very simple it just means that you have two orbitals for example two 1s orbitals and they overlap with each other and the area overlap would then um, be uh, considered the chemical bond so here's an example of this just look at this picture right now here's two hydrogen atoms you remember that the hydrogen atom the electron in the hydrogen atom is in the 1s orbital so if you have two hydrogen atoms coming together, each one of them would have an unpaired electrons. There will be a hydrogen atom with this electron. There will be another hydrogen atom with this electron. When the two of them come together, this electron is feeling attraction from this nucleus. This electron is feeling this attraction from this nucleus. So they come close enough together to form what we call a chemical bond. Uh, and that chemical bond is basically this part right here, which is the area overlap between um, the two orbitals, the two 1s orbitals. Okay, so that particular area overlap, you can calculate this, the property of this area of overlap because you know the wave function that corresponds to the 1s orbital. Okay, so going back to this text right here, the two valence orbitals uh, that form this bond, uh, they usually contain a single electron each, just like the example that I just illustrated. So there's one electron on this side, there's one electron on this side, and when they form that bond, the two electrons um, pair up uh, to, in, uh, in opposite spins. Okay. Now the single electrons are paired up uh, upon overlapping. Okay. So the overlap of orbitals basically create this area of increased electron density between the two nuclei. Right. So when they're they're overlapping here, the electrons are most likely. Now you have a, a kind of a different type of the wave function in the sense that. This area now is is uh, it's a lot more uh, electron dense than what it was before, so then this is what we refer to as our uh, chemical bond. Okay. Now the strength of this bond, you know, you can calculate again. It's proportional to the overlap area. Now, when I talk about calculation, I really mean that you have to have the wave function for these atomic orbitals, and then you can then make calculations about you know how much. Uh, how much of that orbital is overlapping with the other orbital you can you can make these kind of calculations now of course at our level we can't because we we don't have that the math level necessary to do that but uh, I'm just telling you that it's possible to do that okay so if you were to make those calculations then the more overlap you have between these two orbitals the stronger your bond would be predicted to uh, exist okay now properties and then of course once you get a uh, stronger bond you can then make calculations about energy okay which is really what we're getting at right we're trying to get some energy values out of out of these uh, calculations now the properties of the molecule itself can be predicted uh, using you know the wave functions as well that's used to form the bond okay so I just want to illustrate some examples of this this type of bonding this uh, valence bond model so H2 of course is the one that we just talked about but you can also imagine the uh, molecule F2, fluorine, okay, which will look like this. And let's talk about why it would be. Okay, so in order to understand why F2 looks the way it did in the previous slide when I showed you, let's talk first about the electron configuration of the F atom. So F has uh, nine electrons, if you look up the periodic table, which means that its electron configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, and then... 2p5 which looks something like this now remember the idea with the valence bond model is that a bond is a result of overlap of valence orbitals of two atoms right in this case because the molecule is f2 there will be two f atoms that would overlap the question is which of the three 
orbitals, or in fact, which of the five orbitals, or you have one, two, three, four, five orbitals um, that could be used for bonding, for making that bond? Well, first off, you need to uh, make sure that it's the valence orbital, because the valence orbitals are the one where the electrons have the weakest interaction with the nucleus, so that's the one that's most likely to make interaction with other um, electrons from other atoms. Okay, so in other words, that limits us to just these electrons, because these this is the valence shell for uh, F, for fluorine, okay? This is the core electrons. The next thing you need to know is the second requirement is that you usually want to overlap orbitals that only has a single electron, right? So that pretty much limits it to that, that one uh, orbital right there, which is the last orbital in this case, but it, you know, they're energetically similar, so really any of these orbitals that just has one electron in it. So basically what F is going to do is overlap the electron from this orbital, and this orbital is a 2p orbital, so the 2p orbital looks like a dumbbell shape. So you're going to have two of these 2p orbitals, right? One is this one right here, so you notice that it's this, this, this is one 2p orbital, remember that's this dumbbell shape. And then this is another one from the other fluorine atom, and then when they combine together, that's your chemical bond right there for F2. Now you take uh, let's say, what about the HF molecule, hydrogen fluoride? Well, that's hopefully fairly easy to see. You have a 1s orbital from H. You have a 2p orbital from, from F, right? Because the H, the single electron in H is located in 1s, and the single electron in, 2P, uh, in, in F is located in 2p. And then you just overlap those two orbitals, and you get a bond out of this. Okay? Now, these drawings, like I said, is fairly simplistic. You can see that Okay, you know, so what's the big deal here? But the big deal is that you have wave functions, remember, representing the, um, each of these uh, atomic orbitals. And if you have the wave function, you're then able to calculate the energy using appropriate equations, um, as we talked about in Topic 7. So that's the, you know, that's the power of this approach, this valence bond model, is that it allows you to make those calculations and thus predict the property of your molecules.